Hello, welcome to episode 57 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 31st of January. How's your week been? <laughs> um, I've got quite a few crafty things to share with you. So I've got some knitting, a little bit of sewing, some bobbin lace and a gadget. I have shown this one before but I think it'll be worth showing again. Some confession. It's only been the last, only a week since I last confessed. It's awful, isn't it? And then some information on my shop update, which is the 1st of February at 7pm. So, you can find me on Instagram, Ravelry, Facebook as Craft House Magic. And I have my own website, crafthousemagic.co.uk, where you can find all my handmade knitting-related accessories, hand-dyed yarn and bags, etc. Um, I must say that I used to be on Etsy but now I'm on my own website so you can find the link down below um, to that but I don't sell anything on Etsy anymore because I've noticed that a few people are sort of following me on there but I'm not going to be using it but I thought I'd keep it open so that I can redirect you um, to my new website which there is links to um, in the description so there we go. Um, we have the Gnome Along going on at the moment and the Edinburgh Yarn Festival Knit Along. But if you've got crochet of those things, it's fine. The Gnome Along can be any sort of gnome pattern, whether it's crochet or knitted. And the Candy Cane and Advent, Mini Advent Knit Alongs will be finishing today. So I shall draw for those winners um, either tomorrow or after the weekend, probably. Um, so don't forget to get your entries there. For the candy cane socks, you needed to have uh, put your finished objects in the finished objects thread. Oh, so let's get on to the knitting. So what have we got on the list? Um, we've got my North Easterly, which is my naughty knit, which I shouldn't be knitting. I should be getting on with my cardigan thread and beyond festival. <laughs> so since the last podcast, I've knitted from about there on this row. So I'm using this as sort of car knitting and knitting when I can't bear to concentrate on things because my other projects are quite concentrate -y. That's a word. I've just invented it. <laughs> so if you haven't watched the podcast before, I've got two rows that are the length that I want them to be. And I'm making this blanket pattern into a scarf instead. See, I've remembered that it's a scarf this week. <laughs> Um, so the northeasterly pattern is a pattern by Skin Anagans, um, and it's a paid for pattern on Ravelry and there is a different version which has also got um, more details in the chevron shapes but I really like this plain one. So it's meant to be a blanket pattern but I thought I need just to make a scarf out of this so I can wear it all the time. I'm going to attempt to try it on with it even though it's attached to yarn. <laughs> You can get the idea of what it looks like and I'm wrapping the yarn around my head as well so hopefully I won't get stuck. <laughs> so I'm thinking maybe three, maybe another one row after this, I don't know. Once my hair isn't tucked in it does come down a little bit lower, that's better. So I think that that's a nice length. I'm not sure whether it needs to be three or four rose wide though but I am enjoying it and I'm still using my minis that I got from my advent calendars so that's my first work in progress my second is very very exciting I have been working on my cherry blossom cardigan and the pattern is by Lena Tosti now I've probably not pronounced that correctly so I'm going to show you the front of the pattern so that I don't confuse you so that's the pattern, so it's going to be a lovely cardigan that's mostly grey, but I finished the colour work section. So I'm working this up in John Arbor Knit by Numbers, and I have the... <laughs> oh, doesn't that look lovely? I have my yoke blocked out, because I wanted to see whether the colour work won, whether it looks okay, and also whether it fit. So I shall put it on to show you. And I think that that's going to be okay because I've got a provisional cast on around the top so that there'll be a little bit of rib. Um, and it does flip up at the shoulders but once I've sort of picked up um, or dropped the stitches for the arms and put those on waist yarn I think that'll fit nicely. So I've got um, the stitches I've got picked up all round well not picked up but the stitches all around the edge are just held on some waste yarn while I blocked it 
um, and I'm really pleased out with how the colour works come out so that's how it's looked the two colour colour work it's not the neatest colour work in the world but I'm relatively pleased with it so it's okay and I've started doing some embroidery doing the darker centres for the flowers so you can see that's the bit without the dark centres and there's the bit with the little bit of pink added so I've been duplicate stitching over there with some of the um, darker pink so this one is 79 I think out of the John Arbor knit by numbers and 77 is the one that I knitted the actual flowers in and number five is the grey that I used for the background which I'm going to use for the rest of the body as you can see it's going to be a sticked cardigan because I've got this bit in the middle very exciting and I've got some more embroidery to do on the top of this so can't see in the camera very well so between these flowers I'm going to have some sort of vines well not vines but branches that's it and I've ordered so a few little a few more little minis from John Arban knit by numbers selection to see which one I'm going to put in so to start with I thought shall I go with the greens so I picked three greens um, off the colour charts just to see if I can put it up against it and then I've got a dark brown now what do you think for the branches? This is really difficult to hold up. Do I go for a green or a brown? I'm sort of drawn towards the darker one of the greens or the brown or whether that will be too loud, I don't know. What I think I might do tonight is get just one single thread and just do a couple of stitches of perhaps the green and the brown and just to see what it looks like because it's difficult to see when it's just a skein next to it. Whether that'll be a bit too bright but it's a lovely green isn't it? These two might be a little bit more subtle but then I know with colour work sometimes you have to be careful not to go too subtle. But isn't it exciting that I finished the yoke? That has probably taken me absolutely forever. <laughs> it seems to have taken forever, but now I'm onto the plain bit. It's going to whiz by, hopefully, because I've only got about, I don't know, 50 days till Edinburgh Arm Festival, and I haven't got much of a cardigan. I can always wear it just like this. What do you think? Just that on its own. <laughs> so, I, like I said, I've got to pick up the stitches round the neck and do some ribbing. So it won't look quite so sort of gapey as that, but Ooh. I'm also thinking of modifying the pattern slightly because in the pictures, what have I done with the main? I've just jumbled up my whole pattern, oh dear. I don't know if you can really see it in I don't know if you can see it in these pictures very well. Because they're printed on my printer at home. Round the band round the bottom around the cuffs and down the front of the cardigan this ribbing has got a bit of colour work in it but I think I prefer it to be plain so I think I'm going to do that um, it is pretty with the colour work in but I just think it's more fitting for my style for it to be grey um, if anybody else has knitted this any suggestions or anything would be lovely or anybody has any suggestions to what colours I should use around the um, for the branches bit that would be brilliant um, it's always nice to have somebody else's opinion so that's my second project and I've started another project which I probably shouldn't have done it's because I had to have another project when my yoke was blocking so this is my hear my gnome again hat here I know him again, I can't speak properly today and it's, oh look at that cable I have cheated though because you're supposed to do cables in several places around the hat but I decided that I'd just do it on the front because this yarn is quite dark and it's difficult to see cables uh, at night in dark yarn so I was like I'll just do one at the front <laughs> when I'm watching the TV so the Here I Gnome Again pattern is by Sarah Skera and I do have a picture on my phone here so I can show you quickly so that's what it's going to look like hopefully it isn't blown out too much so I've got the start, the beginnings of my hat started 
So there we go. So the yarn is by Little French Meadow and it's the sock little mini, sock set mini that I got left over from the socks that I knitted that were called It's a Disaster Darling. <laughs> <laughs> and this was the mini from the second sock set I bought because I'd knitted them way too long for a 50 gram, 20 gram sock set. Um, so it was good really because I could knit my little gnome with it. So that's coming out lovely. I'll show you the back. I've just done plain pearl on the back. And this is a four ply yarn. You can do it in uh, a DK as well and you'll just get a bigger gnome. Gnomes could be any size so I'm just going for it. <laughs> And I'm knitting them with 2.75 millimeter needles, I think. It's no good asking me to read what the numbers say without a flipping magnifying glass. <laughs> so I think I'm basically sticking to the needles that are in the pattern. But I'm really pleased with how that's coming out so far. Let's have another look at that cable. Beautiful. I absolutely love cables. I've now got a big pile of knitting in front of me. It's not actually that much, is it? Right, we've got some sewing. Barbara, come on over. I've had to shout because she's in the other room. Hello. <laughs> so she's back again. Oh, she's not very central, is she? Let's move her over there. So Barbara is is um, stylishly modelling my <laughs> new cashmereette top. So this pattern is by Cashmereette and it's called the Concord. And I wanted to make a short sleeve version. And this is one of the uh, choices that you can just cut out the pattern pieces and it's got a lovely short sleeve with a little tab on so the longer sleeve one oh I happen to be wearing the long sleeve one because I wear this quite a lot so this is the long sleeve version of it that I've made before and I need some short sleeve tops so I had to make some um, and I thought well I'd pick this pattern so you might be able to see the difference this is this is the high neck and then you've got the round neck version but you can also choose a v-neck so i might try that next time um but i quite like this pattern with the um the bit of a lower neck it'll be nice for summer and it's a really nice quality cotton um jersey and um, hopefully that will wash really nicely because i love a really nice quality jersey that you can just keep wearing and wearing and wearing um, so that'll be a lovely addition for my holiday. So there we go. Um, I forgot to mention on the last episode, I've opened a group on the Ravelry thread which talks about having a knitting meetup in Florida when I go over there for my holiday at the end of April, the beginning of May. So um, I've got a few sort of knitting shops that I found myself and I'd love to hear what you think uh, would be the best meeting place or any other suggestions. So there's a Ravelry group over there and I've left a link down below to the Ravelry group if you want to find it. Anyway, back on track. Um, so I used my normal sewing machine to sew the neckband in with the jagged zigzag stitch the well not it's not a zigzag stitch it's a special stretch stitch, stitch that looks like a lightning bolt sort of thing i sewed the neckline in with that and then i used my cover stitch to do a top stitch in place um and i've used overlocker pretty much for everything else apart from the bottom hem here because the sleeve cuffs i used my overlocker to add those in oh and i just to do the little tabs I just use my standard sewing machine um, because you basically have a, sh a sort of shape with a diamond on the end, sew it round the edge, turn it the right way and then you can sew that to the inside, fold it over the top and I've, st I've stitched a button in place. What I did is I just overlocked the end of the little tab um, that's going to go on the inside. I didn't. You don't really need to worry about overlocking it though. I just am obsessed with overlocking things. <laughs> so there we go. So that's another top that's replacing my um, ready-to-wear wardrobe. Even though it's a bit boring and you can't really see it in navy, but I've got some exciting things to show you in my confessions that I literally ordered yesterday. So they've already arrived. Anyway, Barbara, thank you very much. So I've got my bobbin lace to show you now. So I've done quite a bit since last time compared to how I normally get on. So I think I was sort of here on this section and I finished that section off up there and I've added this bit here. Let's see if I can get a bit closer. There we go. So that's sort of finished the one side of the piece off. And I've got, if you can see the drawing in the middle, I've got some more leaves to do. And then, then there's another 
loop comes out over here that I've got underneath. I've got lots of threads that are sort of tucked out under the cotton um, cloths um, just because I need to sew those in afterwards. Once I've um, sewn those into the background fabric, because these are going to be mounted um, to be displayed as a picture, um, then you'll be able to see those. But I'm so glad I'm not having to sew those in. So normally if it wasn't being mounted um, directly onto some fabric that you'd have to weave the ends in to, to the work itself, which is a nightmare. <laughs> so this pattern is from a book called Modern Bobbin Lace. So this is a kind of a freestyle bobbin lace. So um, bobbin lace can be categorised into different sort of styles. Like the most basic one that people tend to start with is torsion lace. Um, but this isn't really, this is sort of, a, it's modern lace. So it isn't categorised any, into any traditional sort of subsets. So that it's sort of a bit freer and you can kind of do what you like. So actually on the front cover, that's what it's going to end up looking like. Well, I hope. Hopefully that's how it'll look in the end. So we will we will see. So hopefully I'll get loads done by next week and be able to show you another section. While I'm on the topic of bobbin lace, I thought I might as well mention this. So last week I published a little video on the things you'll need to do your own bobbin lace to be to start as a beginner. Um, and I'm going to be recording some footage this afternoon on how you wind bobbins and also how you do cloth stitch um, or hole stitch. And then next week, hopefully I'll do half stitch as well. So I'm just going to do the very basics so that you can get to grips with doing something really, you know, easy, really. Get, get your head around it and then you can do sort of more complicated more complicated projects but absolutely it can be broken down into such small little pieces that you need to know it's actually not as difficult as you think have a go <laughs> anyway I shall be getting on with the next section what what have I got next oh I've got my gadget to talk about next so I posted a picture of my cherry blossom um, yoke, how I blocked it on some blocking mats. And a couple of people asked me, ooh, what are those things that you are using um, that are in the place of sort of blocking pins? Now, I have shown these as a gadget before, but because people hadn't heard of them, I thought it's worth mentioning them again because I love these. So they're not by Knit Pro, and they're basically like pins. They're called knit blockers, and they're like pins, but they come on a strip like this. I've got to do the traditional holding my hand up so you can see. <laughs> so they're like this. So there's, there's eight pins on a little plastic thing that you can easily grip. It's nice and soft. And there's 12 of those and eight of these smaller ones. And I find that if you want to just quickly block something, these are much quicker than single pins. And I just oh I just end up reaching for these so much and I've actually got two boxes which I find that I need for quite a lot of projects that I tend to do so um, I did buy one first decide whether I like them and then purchase a second box because they're not cheap I think they come up between 15 and 20 pounds a box but I'm so glad I bought them two boxes comes to 40 pounds that sounds quite expensive doesn't it? <laughs> don't tell Adam what I've been buying <laughs> Right, we're on to some confessions. Yesterday, I decided that I needed to go and buy the Linden um, sweatshirt pattern. So the Linden sweatshirt pattern's by Grainline Studio. And I was thinking about getting this because I, I've got this fabric. This is Liberty Printed Fleece. And it's got gorgeous, gorgeous pattern on. And I was going to do, try and use the Frankie t-shirt pattern um, to work up a top in it. But I found that the neckline was really high. And I just thought, I'm going to be lazy and not draft it out, even though I'm going to cut down the t-shirt I'd got so that it's got a slightly lower neck. Um, but I just thought I'd try it, because I haven't tried a Grain Line Studio pattern. And I thought I'd branch out, because I tend to do a lot of sew-over-it patterns um, and a lot of tilly in the buttons. So I thought, I'm going to try the Linden sweatshirt. So I've picked that up, and I picked it up from a shop called The Fold Line. Now the fold line has got a really good um, list of lots and lots of patterns that you can find online and now they've started stocking them. So I bought these from the fold line directly 
I think it was, it came to about £19 with the postage as well um, for the paper copy, which you can get the PDF version for £14, I think. But I really wanted to support um, the fold line ladies who run it because they're just really nice. And they also have a YouTube channel, which I quite like to follow. And I, I'm afraid I don't know the lady who, who talks to us on the YouTube videos. Um, but she does this YouTube um, little update of what the the sort of modern patterns are every month like top fashion type of thing and I do like to listen to it even though I just tend to stick to the same sort of things that I like really <laughs> but it's, it's really interesting and she's really nice and actually she's a really interesting lady because um, she used to make hats for a living and she did a little uh, video one time on sort of the very basics on how to make a hat and it was just amazing Anyway, I digress. So I, I purchased this from the Fold line and I would definitely recommend um, purchasing them from there because I literally ordered it yesterday afternoon and it's come this morning. So that is very good service. Purchase number two. This is naughty. I was also watching, so Lauren from, she was on the sewing bee, the first sewing bee. Um, I think she came second. So her name was Lauren and she's opened her own shop called Guthra and Garney. Now let me just see if I've got the pattern, pattern. Let me just see if I've got the card that came with it so that you can see. Oh, I had it here somewhere. I've got, oh, here we go. So Guthra and Garney, that's the card that came with it. And it came with a lovely personal message. Um, and it says, Love your fabric choices, they look so nice together and it's like been handwritten and it tells you who's packed it and everything. So, Guthra and Garney, I would definitely recommend those as well because I literally ordered this yesterday afternoon and it's come this morning as well. So I thought, oh well, I have a week of no confessions. That's absolutely wrong, isn't it? So I was watching Lauren's YouTube channel and I, I can't remember whether, I think it's called something to do with Lauren anyway her oh, I'm absolutely rubbish I'll pop it on the screen and I'll leave a link down below but I would definitely recommend you going over to Lauren's YouTube channel because she's been recently doing some videos on what different fabric groups are and the latest one was on sort of drapier fabrics and it explains the difference between sort of viscose and modal and sort of polyester and peach skin and things like that so I I thought it was quite interesting there's a couple of things I picked up from there and she'd mentioned this product so this is basically like a seam tape but it's 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 like an interface it's made of interfacing but there's a line of stitching through the center so you can use this um, instead of doing stay stitching around the neck of things when you've got a very lightweight fabric and sometimes that can be an absolute nightmare so I thought oh, I need some of that so I popped over to Guthra and Garni and I put that in my basket and then I realized because this is about five pounds I realized that I was gonna have to pay three pounds postage so I thought just have a look at what fabric they've got <laughs> and I found this and I thought I'm definitely still in need of some few more short sleeve t-shirts so I found this stripey and it's actually a tealy blue with white stripes and this is a an art gallery fabric I don't know why I'm trying to show you the selvage. I doubt whether you'll be able to read what it says on there. So it's an art gallery fabric. So art gallery fabric is really quite expensive, but really good quality. So it's a nice um, stretchy um, jersey, but not quite nice thick weight. If you remember um, watching my Make 9 from last year, a couple of weeks ago, I showed a t-shirt where I had little butterflies on and that was an art gallery fabric and that has washed brilliantly. So I've picked this gorgeous blue stripy fabric and I was thinking because for my sweatshirt that I showed you, um, the Liberty fabric I just showed you, I bought this pink ribbing and I think I've decided that I'm just going to use the Liberty fabric to go around the neck because I think that'll be sort of more I don't know more subtle and a bit more sophisticated <laughs> but I thought I'm going to put it with this because just a neckline this really doesn't look like a neckline does it you can imagine <laughs> a little thin neckline 
of this pink around the top and then I thought if I could do a t-shirt like my short sleeve version of this cashmere at Concord I could also put a nice bright pink button on the sleeve there I don't know if you can see so you can't actually see how bright that is on the camera it's it's a little bit more muted on the camera than it is in real life so that's a, a really nice bright pink I've just dropped my button now but with the teal in this fabric it looked really nice what I shall do at the end of the podcast is I'll take a photograph of these next to each other so you can actually see what the colours look like a bit better but I thought that that would be a little something a little bit funky something that nobody else has got hopefully <laughs> Um, so there we go. I'm going to have all these fabrics that I haven't folded up and I bought one more fabric but it might have been quite an expensive purchase so if you remember on the podcast where I was talking about my make nine for this year for my dressmaking I showed you this copy of a Vogue pattern. I did explain before that I did pick this copy up off eBay and the pattern pieces inside are all the same but the outside was damaged so that they put a photocopy of the, um, the pattern envelope so it looks a bit weird but I wanted to make this version um, because I thought that that would be really nice um, to wear just casual really during the day. So I was looking at Lauren's website Gooter and Garni and I saw this grey uh, viscose wool mix and it said that it was very drapey and I thought that would be ideal for that um, jacket. I'm going to attempt to demonstrate the drapiness of the fabric so you can see that it's quite a drapey wool rather than stiff but it is quite thick but I'm afraid I think I got the last sort of bit of it because it was on sale so I think this is normally £25 a metre and it was reduced to £20 a metre and I just got enough to make this jacket with so uh, we'll see how we get on. I'm thinking that I'm not going to attempt to wash it because I probably won't wash a coat anyway and let, I'll probably spot clean it if it gets dirty at all um, so I don't think I'm going to wash the fabric before I make it. I've never made a coat before though, so any tips of what you guys have done, that would be lovely to know. I've just always made loads of tops really. <laughs> so that's my conversions. So I know what I'm going to do with things. <laughs> Still naughty though, isn't it? Oh dear. Terrible. So the last bit of my podcast is going to be a little bit of information on my shop update. So I'm basically going to show you my 12 new colourways that I've um, invented and I'm going to have in the shop update tomorrow at 7 o'clock, 1st of February at 7pm GMT. And then I've also got four colourways that I'm also um, filling up the shop with so I can show you what I'm going to put in the shop tomorrow. So the four existing colourways, if you don't want to listen to all this, I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. But if you want to listen to it, here we go. So I've got some purple rain. Now, purple and pinks don't show up on my camera for some reason, but that's purple rain. I'll pop a, a camera, a, a camera on the screen, a picture on the screen. <laughs> and I've got some teenage dirt bag, and that again has got some purple bits in it. So. All these colourways that I'm going to show you today, I'm going to have available on Merino Nylon 75 20 25 on the 4 ply base, Merino Nylon 75 25 on the DK base, um, my, my finger in weight BFL um, and nylon which is 80 20 and also the sparkle base which is 75% Merino, 20% nylon and 5% Stellina. Right, we've got that bit over with. <laughs> so all these ones I'm going to show you have got all those spaces that will be updated in the shop tomorrow. Um, but I've obviously picked one. So this one is actually on a sparkle base, which I don't suppose you can really see on camera. And this one's on the merino nylon. No, oh, that's on the DK, that one. I've also got some Here Comes the Rain again. And some sock sets and also single skeins of Over the Rainbow. So those ones you've seen before. So my lovely friend Jo had knitted a lovely sample knit for me out of some of my yarns. So these are the new DK range that I've got. And they're three new colourways. So the pattern she used is the Wishmaker Shawl by Helen Stewart. And isn't that lovely? 
and it, it was much quicker using DK as well as she was saying. Let's put it on. I am going to send it back to you Jo, don't worry I won't steal it. <laughs> So there we go, that's the Wishmaker shawl and the colours that she's used are, this is Imagine, so let me grab the skeins to show you, so this is Imagine which is the sort of natural colour with speckles of green and blue and the odd bit of pink, um, so that one is this one here and then we've got We All Stand Together which is in green and I should explain what these are for. So Imagine is the John Lennon song. I'm not going to attempt to sing them. So this is um, We All Stand Together and that's the green one in the shawl. And this is based on the song by Paul McCartney and the Frog Chorus. That's We All Stand Together. I couldn't resist that. <laughs> and the third colourway that's in this shawl is this one here. I don't think that the camera was really picking up all the tones itself so I've made a very very dark um, navy sort of blue but there are pops of colour of yellow and red in there and it's called the final countdown Doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> and you can obviously tell what song that's based on and I just love it this is a Stellina base that I've got in my hands um, but obviously this is the DK one hasn't got Stellina in it that I'm wearing but I I don't think you can really see on camera but the little pops of lighter colour comes out really nice so that's those three together to make this shawl um, so that's three of the new colourways talked about already so I decided that I needed another dark grey and I've got this one so this is called Living on a Prayer after the Bon Jovi song because I think um, that video had a lot of sort of black and white footage and it really reminded me of a sort of tonal grey so that's my tonal grey and I'm loving it on this sparkle base or oh, you can see now a little bit how it's sparkling I don't think you can really see how much it sparkles on camera though compared to real life um, Let's go for some other darker ones as well. So I have Smooth Criminal. So this is Michael Jackson's song, Smooth Criminal. And I thought like sort of purpley blue would be really representative of that song for me. So that's a nice tonal again. I was trying to fill in my gaps where I'd missed sort of colours really as well as, as finding ins uh, inspiration from songs. And this one here is called The Way You Make Me Feel by Michael Jackson and those two uh, have got that same sort of purpley blue both in them so those would go together really nicely. I have um, Saving All My Love For You by Whitney Houston and there's splashes of purple and like a green and a grey in there so I think that that'll come out nicely. I think I'm going to put uh, photographs on the screen as well because the camera's not picking up colours even better today so I think I forgot to uh, adjust my white balance. Sorry guys. Um, I have this one which is the land of make-believe. So this is inspired by that Bucks Fizz song and there's little speckles of all different colours in there. This one's Dress You Up and it's based on the Madonna song and it's like a, a pale beige with little splashes, splashes of coral um, and pink pink. We have China In Your Hand and that's inspired by the Tapau song and I was thinking of actual China and it's just little splashes of pale purple and blue and that really reminds me of vintage China so there we go, China In Your Hand. This one's You Can't Hurry Love and it's inspired by the Phil Collins song. So it's a pale sort of corally pink or dusky pink with some grey speckles on. And last but not least we've got this one which is Only You by the Flying Pickets. And it's a very pale pinky colour with some bright splashes of blue on there. That's one of my favourites too. So that's all my new ones and I've just noticed, I forgot to show you one of my existing ones that I'm updating in the shop as well. So this one is Grello Submarine so that'll be in the shop as well. So I've tried to have a good range of lighter and darker colours. Um, so let's grab all the light ones so you can sort of see them. <laughs> so there we go, so there's some of the lighter ones. 
I'm thinking of doing um, a Vertices Unite in some of these new colourways, but I just I'm finding it difficult to choose yet. But it's definitely going to have some of my um, the grey, the dark grey, which is living on a prayer. But yes, we've got loads of yarn in the shop. I think it's probably my biggest shop update. There's going to be over 200 skeins in the shop. Um, on Friday at seven o'clock. So watch out. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more. And I shall see you next week. Have a lovely crafty.